Adventures by Morse. Tarzan E. Morse presents... The Girl on Shipwreck Island, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder, come with me. When Captain Bart Friday and his sidekick, Skip Turner, return to Saigon, capital of French Indochina, following their experiences in the Cambodian jungles, they were taken immediately to Government House. They had accomplished such a satisfactory piece of work for the French territorial government, they were immediately asked to take on another mission, en route back across the Pacific to San Francisco and home. This mission had to do with flying a special French-type army plane from Saigon to Australia, where it was to be torn down and shipped by boat to France. Had you ever flown this type plane before, Captain Friday? Well, something pretty similar. It wasn't entirely familiar, but with Skip acting as mechanic and co-pilot, I was pretty confident. Isn't that right, Skip? Why, sure. Wasn't a plane that bothered me. I hated like the deuce to separate from the rest of the Carter party. <laughs> Business before pleasure. Oh, sure, I know, but I got pretty fond of Professor LeBron and Perry Mills. Mm. Now, how about Celia? <laughs> Doggone right. And here Perry and Patricia went and got married in Saigon, and we hardly had a chance to kiss the bride. Boy, we would go on another harebrained mission. Well, Perry and Patricia and Professor Lebrun and Celia are well out to sea by now on a luxury liner for San Francisco. Yeah, and look at where we are. Where Captain Friday and Skip Turner are is another matter entirely. Yesterday afternoon, they took off from the Saigon Airport. Out over the China Sea and the Indian Ocean they flew. Into the night, through oriental moonlight and white clouds, which stood up on end like mountains and skyscrapers and giant pillars. And when the dawn came, these massive towers of white clouds turned rose and pink and flame color and lit up the sky so that the flyers felt as though they were driving through a sky on fire. And then, as full day came, the vastness of the ocean expanse spread out below them. From horizon to horizon, nothing but the dirty blue of the ocean below and the haze blue of the heat-tinted atmosphere around them. And then it happened. Engine trouble. And when the motors conked out completely, the sound of wind in the struts and against the fuselage and on the wings was all the sound there was. And the falling craft gathered speed. And it was then that Skip Turner caught sight of a tiny island, hardly bigger than a pocket handkerchief, looming ahead of them right into the wind. With every ounce of skill, Captain Friday kept the plane under control, heading it for the small place of refuge. And then they slipped down onto the bosom of the water. To add further to the good fortune of landing safely, there was a sandy beach, and the first waves took the plane and ran it up on the sand like a toy in a bathtub. Holy! Man, oh man, did you see what happened to us? Yeah, you can be glad you're not feeding the fishes at this very moment. Amen, brother, amen. You didn't get hurt in that bouncing around. Huh, not a scratch. You? Nope. Well, Chief, let's get out and see the country. Get this strap unfastened. I don't think the plane's been hurt any. Well, doggone them engines. What's your suppose happened? Uh, there. Will the door open? Oh. Yep. Yeah. I ain't jammed a bit. Good, get out, Skip. Yeah. Hey, you coming? Yep. Yeah. There. Hey, listen to that bird. Sounds like San Diego on a bright June night. I don't see any hi- signs of habitation anywhere around. Uh, you can't tell what's up in that jungle stuff way from the beach. That's pretty rugged country. Volcanic. Yeah, probably caves and stuff up in there. You know, we was lucky to find a sandy beach. Well, let's have a look. Got your packet of special rations? <laughs> yes, sir. Including six bars of chocolate. Here we go, then. Hey, what about the plane, Captain? 
Shouldn't we ought to give it to once over and see whether we're stuck here for good? Well, that'll have to come later, Skip. First thing's to see if we're in any danger from the natives. Yeah, if there is any. Looks like a deserted hunk of volcano to me. Yep. Yeah, guess we'll have to wade through this grass for a little. Yeah. Hey, where are we aiming for? I thought if we could climb up on that high ground, we might get a survey of the whole place. We ain't might at that. Whole place ain't two miles across in any direction, look like, from the air. Okay. Here's where we start the climb. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to get out of that grass. There's one thing I hate. It's the snakes and bugs and stuff down in this part of the world. Well, a lot of sharp lava. Edges like a razor. You've got to pull yourself up in some of these places. You make it? Yeah. Come on up. Okay. Phew, is that sun boiling? I think we can skirt the edge of that next pinnacle. Seems to be easier going to the left here. It looks like the minute we get up on the next level, we're going to be in a tangle of jungle. Don't worry about that when we get up there. Notice how the island seems to be built up in tiers. First the beach level, and this level we're on. Then up above the jungle level. Yeah. I ain't seen nothing that looks like human life yet. If there are any natives, they're going to be pretty shy of two white men. Especially coming down out of the sky, as we just did. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. What do we do now? Run into a blank wall, all right. Oh, it's ten foot if it's an inch, and straight up. And no place to go except turn back. Skip, do you think you could boost me up? Maybe if I could get my fingers over the edge, I could scramble up. Sure, but how do I get up? Let's figure that when I make it up. Okay. Climb up on my shoulders. Hey, but for gosh sakes, keep them hobnails out of my ribs. Here I go. Hey, you're taking my skin off. Hold still, Ep. Oh, still, he says. You making it? Yeah. yeah. I got my fingers over the edge. Now you can reach up and push my feet up when I heave. Well, I can try. Uh, you go. You make it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, now what about me? Uh, just a minute. Be with you in just a minute. Hey, what's up there, anyway? I haven't had much of a chance to look around. Yeah. There. Hey, you got your pants off. That's right. I'll brace myself up here and throw the legs of my pants over the edge. Grab a hold and scramble up. <laughs> and what if I tear a leg off? <laughs> For your own good, you better not. <laughs> okay, let's go. Yeah, here I come. Uh, looks like I'm naked. Uh, up with you. Yeah. There. Yeah. Uh, uh, excuse me while I put my trousers back on. Well, will you look around us? Hey, this ain't the kind of a jungle I thought we'd find up here. Yeah, yeah. It looks interesting, though. Hey, that's beautiful. Kind of rolling meadow with green grass and vines and a lot of palm trees. Okay, let's go and investigate. Yeah. That's more like a park. And we'll keep heading for high ground, huh? Yeah. I'd like to get a picture of the whole island if I can. Hey, look, as soon as we get back from the rock ledge, the ground's as black and fertile as a California meadow. Uh-oh, look there. Yeah, they're rabbits. <laughs> Looks like a cross between a rabbit and a kangaroo. It's just the size of a rabbit. Hey, hey, there's some more of them. Hey, this place is alive with them. Well, we won't starve here, that's one thing. Hey, let's cut across to that high spot. Yeah. Hey, this is kind of interesting, you know. I didn't know there was any South Sea Islands like this. You want to stay here and homestead it? <laughs> the heck with that. Too far to the nearest drugstore. Okay, here we are. Yep, yeah, and there's your whole island laying out before you. Hello. The island seems to be divided into two parts. Look at that ravine down below us. Yeah. Seems to have two humps, like the back of a camel. Yeah. We're standing on one hump, and across the ravine is the other. Hello. That water down there in that ravine? Hey, it looks like a creek, all right. If there's a freshwater stream on the island, we're more than in luck. Hey, you talk as if you didn't think we was going to be able to get that airship off the beach. Well, that remains to be seen. Hey, Captain. Captain, look down yonder in the water. Where? By that palm tree down by the creek. It's a girl. Skip, I think you're right. Why, of course I'm right. A white girl using the old swimming hole as sure as I'm a foot high. She's a white girl, all right. How far away do you imagine she is? Mm, a couple of hundred yards in a straight line, I reckon. Probably half a mile away we'd have to travel to get down to where she is. Well, what are we waiting for? <laughs> yeah, man. Now, what in the blazes is the white girl doing alone on this desert island? She might be a Polynesian. Oh, but their skins ain't pure white. They're kind of brownish. 
You could see for yourself, this girl's skin was white as milk. It actually gleamed in the sunshine. Hey, look, you can still see it. <laughs> You're not going poetic on me, are you, Skip? Well, I know, but something like this don't happen to a man every day. Here, we're going to have to skirt around the brow of the hill for a ways. Oh, but we'll lose sight of her. So we lose sight of her. She can't keep out of our way for very long on an island no bigger than a pocket handkerchief. Oh, uh, just a minute, Chief. Well? Uh, looky, um, maybe you should stay here and uh, kind of keep her in view while I hey, go down and... Hey, 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 what kind of double talk's that? Well, I was just thinking. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Come on, we go down together. Well... It was our idea. I'll say it was. So we get around the brow of this hill and... Hey! Get up there, Skip. Huh? Well, I'll be a son of a gun. Shipwreck. You see, it is a white girl. Shipwrecked and marooned on this island. Probably for months and months. Yeah. That craft's been piled up on the beach there for six months anyway, looks like. Yeah, but where's the rest? The captain and crew and the rest. Probably weren't over five or six in the crew. Yeah? Uh huh. Looks like a small luxury schooner. Millionaires, yeah, huh? Could be. Well, anyway, that explains a girl. Come on, let's get down to her. We don't want to rush in on her. Probably scare her to death. Don't be silly. She'll be so glad to see white folks again. She'll probably throw her arms around our necks and hug us to death. <laughs> Skip the romanticist. Well, why shouldn't she? After all, if I hadn't seen a white girl for six months, I know how I'd feel. You think she's going to feel any different? Well, as to that, Skip. <laughs> hey, that was a racket. Get the dirt, Skip. <laughs> Hey, they were shooting at us. I could hear the bullet just playing. Why is that little white-skinned female shooting at her rescuer? That wasn't the girl, Skip. The shots came from behind us. Here are Captain Bart Friday and Skip Turner marooned on a desert island in the South Pacific when their army plane in which they were flying between Saigon, French Indochina, and Australia conked out on them. They landed the plane safely with hopes of repairing the motors, but at the moment are exploring their island refuge. At the foot of the hummock on which they have been standing, they see a freshwater stream, and in the stream, a white girl bathing. They are just making their way down to this amazing vision when two rifle bullets sing over their heads. The shots have come from behind them. And just now, the two are wriggling on elbows and stomachs through the long grass for safety in the ravine below. Keep down and keep coming, Skip. Honest to my grandma, I never felt so sorry for a snake in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine having to go around on your belly all your life. Hold it just a minute. Yeah. I need a breather. Either we've eluded the guy with the nervous trigger finger or else he's stalking us, waiting to get a really good beat on us. Well, that's a comforting thought. Well, another ten feet and we can drop down behind those rocks in the ravine. You think that makes me mad? Them shots probably scared heck out of the gal we saw in bathing. Where will she be now? Probably jumped into her clothes and beat it for home. Home? Oh. Well, whatever she calls home these days. Yeah, and if she hides out on us, it'll take us maybe days to make contact. It's not the angle that bothers me. Yeah? We now know that there are other people on this island besides the girl. Hey, I hadn't thought of that. What I want to know is why one of them wanted to shoot at us. <laughs> well, maybe he and the gal are here all alone and wants to keep it that way. On the other hand, if he's been marooned on this island for six months, he'd welcome a rescue party with wide open arms. Even with a beautiful gal all to herself? Even with ten beautiful girls all to himself. I don't believe it. Well, come on. Let's get down to the rocks. Okay. Watch the way I wiggle my hips as I slither through the grass. Okay, hold it. Hey, Captain, you can hear the creak. Listen. Oh, don't that sound cool and refreshing. Yeah. Right over the edge. I'll drop down under the gravel. Then when I see everything is all clear, I'll give you the high sign. Okay. I'll have my gun all set to back you up if there's any trouble. Check. Here I go. There. Hey, Skip. Okay, Chief. All clear. Come on down. Yeah. Oh, man, oh, man, does that water look good. 
Hey, how about us falling on our faces and having a drink, huh? Undoubtedly spring water. Go ahead. Yeah, man. Oh, man. I never tasted anything so good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, isn't it? Yeah. Now then, what? Let's follow down this creek to where we saw the girl in bathing. Again. Yeah, maybe we can pick up a trail again, even if she has disappeared. Come on, then. Hard walking on these rocks. Yeah, like walking on marbles and billiard balls. Hey, we can't be very far from the babe's swimming hole. I've got it spotted, right? It should be around the next turn in the ravine. Mm-hmm. Water's getting a little deeper along here. Hold it, Skip. What's the matter? Crouch down along the edge of the bank. Get down low. Hey, what's going on? Somebody's standing on the bank right above us. Uh oh. Quiet. Listen. I say, is that you, Gracie? Gracie? Huh? Shh, quiet. It's all right, Gracie. I'm all alone. You don't need to be afraid of me, you know. You know that, Gracie. You know that I. <laughs> Hey, somebody shot him. Quick, Skip. Help me put him out of the creek before he drowns. Yeah. Up with him. Easy. Oh, wait. Wait, Skip. I got him. Never mind. Drop him back in the water. Hey. Drop him back. He's dead. Look at the back of his head. Oh. Oh, yeah. Now listen. Somebody's coming along the bank. The killer? Come on. Get back under the bank. Yeah. Low. <sighs> Hold it. Hold it. We just made it. Yeah. He's looking down at the body. <laughs> My fine young cockney. You have come to a very bad end. A very bad end. Just like I told you you would. Hey, how about throwing a gun on that guy? Quiet, Skip. Uh, it is too hot to dig for you a grave this afternoon. But tonight you shall have one. See? The senorita must not see like this, no. But tonight you shall have a grave. But now, uh, I shall have my siesta. Mm. Buenos dias, senor Cockney. <laughs> Adios. Hasta la vista. Well, how do you like them apples? Oh, a very cheerful killer. Doggone pirate. Pirate? Certainly a pirate. Didn't you see that bandana tied around his head when he peered over the bank? Uh, I suppose he was a member of that yacht's crew before it went aground. Why, sure. 20th century pirate if I ever saw one. Hey, what do you suppose he killed his sidekick for? I could give a good guess. Gracie? Oh, looks like it to me. Cockney sneaked off to hold rendezvous with Gracie, and our pirate friend followed after him. When he made sure Cockney was trying to get the inside track on the girlfriend, he up and blew the back of his head off. Well, that's one way of getting rid of rival. What does that make, Gracie? I don't know. Shall we go and find out? Yeah, let's. Okay. Keep him close to the bank in case there are any more jealous Romeos in this place. There. Yeah, now we've got some sand to walk on. Yeah. And it's wet, so it won't make a sound. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. This is the pool where Gracie was bathing. Hey, pretty, huh? Nice a pool as you could want. You know, we should ought to pull Cockney out of the creek. Seems too bad to let him contaminate a pool like this. I didn't dare. Cockney's body disappears. The pirate's gonna know something's wrong. Well, I just think Gracie buried it or somebody else. Besides, what hurt if it does get uneasy? I skip there are a couple of things that keep gnawing at my mind. Such as? Those two shots that were fired at us. Uh-oh. Were they really meant for us? It was the pirate firing at Cockney. Got me. If they were meant for Cockney, then it looks like nobody knows yet that we've landed on the island. Hey, how could they miss the airplane coming down? Well, the engines were dead. We just barely glided up to the beach. Unless somebody happened to be looking up, they'd never known we were even in the sky. Okay, so nobody knows we're on the island. What about it? In that case, nobody wants to kill us. Those shots were meant for Cockney. Well, I like it that way better. I never did hanker to have somebody itching to bump me. Huh? What you looking for? Look here, Skip. You find something? Oh. Barefoot prints of a girl's foot in the sand. Yeah, and pointing in that direction. Yeah. 
There's a sort of path away from the pool up through the palm trees. Yes, sir. As neat as though she'd put up a signboard. Well, lead on, Chief. Chief Bo, use these palm trees for shelter as much as possible. Hmm. Just in case of the pirate, huh? Yeah. You're right up ahead. The jungle looks like it thickened up a bit. We're climbing up toward the brow of the second hump, if you notice. Yeah. Apparently, Gracie doesn't wear shoes anymore. Lots of tracks of a girl's bare feet. All the same girl? Seem to be. Hey, the jungle's beginning to close in around her. Pat's still good. She must make a practice of bathing down at the pool. Yeah. Oh, boy, that shade feels good. I never did see such a sun as they have down in this part of the world. Yeah, not so loud. Yeah. Jungle's closed in over the top of us like a tent. Hey, hold it. Huh? What happened? Listen. be a son of a gun. Hold her on, shoot. Here's Gracie. 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 You heard me. He's my parrot, so what about it? I don't see you. No, of course you don't see me. You see her, Captain? No. Oh, she's hidden somewhere off the path in the jungle. There's no use you looking for me. You'll never find me. Here's Gracie. Here's Gracie. Polly, shut up that noise. Um, uh, you must be Gracie. And if I am, so what? Come on out of hiding and let's talk. Oh, no, you don't. Don't what? What do you mean? I don't take no chances with men. Not on this desert island, I don't. But we've just arrived. I know that. I saw your airplane drop out of the sky. Well, then why weren't you down at the beach to meet us? Not me. I'll watch out for myself, I do. Besides, the way you were falling, I thought sure you'd be smashed to bits. Oh, no, not us. Well, it makes no matter. The same rule applies to you two gents, which applies to them that's on the other side of the island. And, um, what rules are those? This off of the island belongs to me. Oh, Yes. When you came to the ravine and waded across the creek, you came on my side of the island. Hey, you mean that hill over yonder belongs to the men, and this hill belongs just to you? That's just what I said, isn't it? I don't get it. I'm a good girl, I am, and I'm a fighter. And when that sailing yacht over yonder went on the rocks, I was the only girl left alive. I took things in my own hands. Yeah, and you sound like you were just the gal could do it, too. And so I am. How many were on the yacht before it was wrecked? The master and the missus and a crew of seven. What about you? I was the Mrs. Lady's mate. And a very good lady's mate I am, too. Mm. That makes ten on the yacht. How many landed safely on the beach? Four of us. You and Cockney and the pirate and one other, huh? The pirate? Sure, the Spanish baby with a turban. Oh, that'd be Manuel. Hmm, Manuel the pirate. And who was the fourth? He was the captain of the yacht. He was killed two days after we landed. And I'll bet it was uh, Nicola, it was Manuel the pirate who done it, too. It was him and Cockney together. Why? It was over me. Hey, you must have something. Oh, you have me moments if I do say so myself. <laughs> well, come on, climb out of the bushes and let's have a look at it. Oh, no, you don't. Is that why you divided the island in two parts and why you keep to yourself over here? It is. When I see the way the men were killing each other with me to go to the winner, I just made up my own rules and got me a gun and a box of cartridges to back me up. Hey, you ain't poking a gun through the bushes at us right now, are you? Make a move in the wrong direction and see what happens. <laughs> you know something, Gracie? So you're getting mighty familiar with the use of a girl's name, if I may say so. Oh, no kidding, Gracie. You're what I'd call a woman with an iron willpower. What about that parrot we keep hearing? He's my pal, he is. My pal and my watchdog. Ain't now anybody able to come within a mile of us without Belshazzar letting me know. <laughs> Belshazzar, huh? Oh, so that's how you knew we were coming up the path, huh? That's it. Every time Manuela Cockney tries to come over here... Oh, uh, by the way, you're not going to have to worry about Cockney anymore. What are you talking about? Manuel just shot him. Oh, no. Yeah. We saw him do it. 
Then none of us is safe on this island. With nobody to stop Manuel, he'll have his old by the heels before morning. Six months ago, when the ocean-going yacht Carlotta went ashore on a two-by-four South Sea island during a typhoon, only four persons got to the beach alive. They included the captain of the craft, two able seamen, Cockney and Manuel, and an English lady's maid named Gracie. My mistress had a neck broken when the master of the ship came down in the storm, and my master was sh- washed overboard trying to save her body from the storm. It was a bloody mess, and how I came to it alive, I'll never know. But there I was, ashore on a desert island, along with three sailors, none of whom I'd ever spoke a word to in my life before. That is, except the captain, to whom I'd said yes, sir, and no, sir. But the captain didn't last long. The second night ashore, Cockney and Manuel set on him and cut him to ribbons in a knife fight. That was enough for me. I took a gun and some cartridges in my poor parrot Bill Shaza and set up housekeeping on the far end of the island in a bit of a cave. And for six months, Gracie protected herself against Cockney and Manuel, living off the berries and fruit and small bird and animal life of the island. And then Captain Friday and Skip Turner, earlier this afternoon, came fluttering down out of the sky in a French army plane whose engines had conked out. Yeah, We were en route from French Indochina to Australia, flying over the Dutch East Indies and a lot of the China Sea. Well out over the South China Sea, something in the mechanical department went haywire, and we had to make an emergency landing. Fortunately, we were in the vicinity of a minute atoll with a sandy beach. We landed without doing the ship any damage. Before beginning our repair job, we surveyed the tiny island, and that's when we discovered the setup here. Tell them about it, Skip. Yeah. Well, when we arrived, there was three people on the island besides ourselves. Cockney, Manuel the Pirate, and the Babe Gracie. It, oh, yeah, and uh, Belle Shazza the Parrot. But uh, before we'd been here an hour, we saw Manuel the Pirate stalk Cockney to the edge of the swimming hole and shoot him in the back. It was because Cockney was trying to get friendly with Gracie behind the pirate's back. So now there's only Manuel and Gracie on the island. That is, except for Cap Friday and me. And both Gracie and Manuel the Pirate are very skittish specimens of the human species. With the exception of the moment when they saw Manuel kill Cockney, they have not laid eyes on the swarthy pirate-looking figure with the turban about his head. They haven't seen Gracie at all. They've talked to her, but she's kept hidden back in the jungle. She's a girl all alone in this little isolated world, and she doesn't trust anything masculine. And now at seven o'clock in the afternoon... Captain Friday and Skip are up to their ears in piston rings, spark plugs, and engine oil as they attempt to adjust their motors for the remainder of the trip to Australia. Boy, talk about rebuilding a motor the hard way. Yeah. Phew. That sun smacking me on the back of the neck like a baseball bat. Okay, I guess you can screw that head down again. Yeah. Yeah. You think we found the trouble? Well, we found one of the troubles. <laughs> How a gas line on an airplane can get stopped up, I don't know. Uh, Screw down hard? Yeah. Won't get any oil leak there. Well, I'd say we were all set to take off then. Okay. How about trying the motors? I'd like to, but I don't want to take the chance. Well, hey, we can't take off without tuning the motors. We'll have to tune them at the last minute. I don't get it. You heard what Gracie said. Oh, you mean about the pirate being a desperate character? Look, why did he and Cockney kill the captain? Fight over Gracie. Hmm. Then why did he kill Cockney? Over Gracie. Okay. You think for one minute he's going to let you and me fly off with Gracie if he can help it? You you mean we're taking Gracie with us? We're not leaving her here for that ape. Oh, I get it, and the pirate knows it. So the minute he thinks we got this airplane fixed to fly again, the real slaughter begins. Right. Not only does he want to keep Gracie, but he doesn't want us to get back to civilization and report him. Remember, he's a two-time killer, and he's stuck here until the authorities come and get him. Hmm. So what are we going to do? Well, when it gets dark, we're going back in the jungles where we met Gracie before. We're going to talk fast and get her to come down to the plane with us. Once we get her inside, we'll turn over the motors, adjust them if they need it, and get the heck out of here before Manuel the pirate knows what's going on. Uh, does Gracie know she's going on an airplane ride? Not yet. Well, she's awful skittish. I don't think she'll come. She's got to come. We have to hog tire. Yeah, well, remember, she's got a gun, and she's been fighting off Cockney and the pirate for six months. We'll have to sneak up on her if she won't trust us. I don't intend to stay here forever, and I don't intend to leave her behind. <laughs> Kidnap her for her own good, huh? 
She'll see reason when we explain what we're up to. Yeah, maybe. What time is it now? Well, after seven. <laughs> Be as dark as the inside of your hat band in another three quarters of an hour. So what do we do until dark? Well, first climb up and close the cabin door and lock it. Yeah. <laughs> You've got everything you want out of the cabin? Yeah. Okay, here she goes, in. And that's that. Hey, you think we can take off on this beach in the dark? How can I miss? Got a half-mile straight beach. Wind's been blowing in the right direction all afternoon. Now, still, it's going to be awful dark. Well, maybe there'll be moon and stars. Well, that'll be your worry, Chief. I'll just shut my eyes and hope you don't run into the China Sea. <laughs> Come on. Hmm? Where are we going? Got to get back up on the plateau before dark. Find the path in the jungle where we talked with Gracie. And supposing a pirate's hiding along the path and lets us have both barrels. We've got to be too smart for him. <laughs> Yeah, that's what Cockney said. Look at him. Fly bait. Okay, okay. You get killed, I'll see you get buried, won't I? You know, Chief, sometimes you're an awful comfort to me. And then sometimes you give me goose pimples up and down my spine. Well, it's dark enough to suit anybody's taste now. Yeah, the sun skidded out of the sky like it had stepped on a banana peel. This seems to be the path. Come on. Hey, you think we'll ever be able to find our way back to the plane? Well, you know it's downhill in that direction. Yeah, and plenty of places to break your neck in between. Oh, quit worrying. Hey, you know something that's funny to me? What's that? Why we haven't had trouble with the pilot so far. He's probably laying low, watching to see what we intend to do. After all, we're two to his one, you know. Yeah, but he could have stood up here on the plateau and popped us off while we was working on a plane down on the beach this afternoon. Couldn't have been sure of hitting us at the distance. All he'd done was put us on the warpath. Okay! Skip! Skip, where are you? Hey, Captain Friday. I'm in the bottom of the well. Are you hurt? Well, I'm Skip. Now, wait till I turn the flashlight down on you. There. Hello. Hey, what kind of a doggone setup is this, anyway? You've fallen into a trap. I'll say I have. A man trap. And I got a couple of skin shins that somebody's going to pay for, too. Apparently, this hole was covered up with grass and leaves and used to trap animals in. Maybe for food. And you mean animals are fool enough to fall down in a hole and break their silly necks? Well, you fell in, didn't you? Okay, okay. You gonna stand there talking or you gonna reach down a hand and haul me out of here? Sure. I'll get down to my knees and reach down. Now then, reach up as far as you can. Yeah. Just reach your hand. Yeah. Okay. Up you come. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, there. Now, who do you suppose set that trap? And why didn't you fall into it? You was ahead of me. Look, the trap's right on the edge of the path. I was walking right down the middle. Apparently, you got too close to the edge. Some of the pirates work. What do you bet? Yeah, maybe. Well, come on. Next time, keep in the path. Yeah. Pardon me if I limp. Sure, go ahead. Limp. Keep close behind. We get ourselves in the doggone this mess. Hey, listen. Belshazzar. <laughs> doggone talking parrot. Gracie said the parrot always warned her when anyone came near. So we must be getting close. Hey, Gracie! Hey, Gracie! Hey, Gracie! <laughs> Makes Gracie sound like a lost puppy dog. Hey, listen. Your hole! Your hole! Your hole! Fifteen men and a dead man's dish. Uh, fly flew east and fly flew west. Uh, I never heard that version before. Skip for the lug of Mike. Shut up. Huh? What's the matter? Somebody's in the jungle alongside the path. Just ahead of us. You sure? Either a person or an animal. I'll just easy my gun around where it's handy. Don't do any shooting without knowing what you're shooting at. Yeah. Bring him a fish. Bring him a fish. <laughs> Rock this old bird. I don't hear anything up ahead. Something's there. Lying and waiting. Why don't you say something to it? I have the pirate open up at this range with his rifle. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Listen, Skip. Yeah. Get down and lie flat. But keep your gun handy. You gonna try something? Yeah. Okay, I'm down. I'm on my stomach right beside you. I'm gonna try to open a conversation. If anyone fires now, it'll probably be over our head. Okay, shoot. Hello up there. I know you're up there, so there's no use pretending you're not. Then it's you, Captain Froggy. 
Huh. Oh. Oh, Gracie. I thought it was the pirate. Who? Manuel, the pirate. And I thought you were Manuel. You seen anything of him? Yes, he's on the prowl. I've had a bad time keeping out of his way all afternoon. You know where he is now? No. Now that night has set in, I've lost him. Is the other one with you, too? Are you talking about me? Keep your voice down, Skip. Oh, yeah. Uh, sure, Gracie, I'm here. I had a talk with Manuel once this afternoon. What kind of talk? He don't like you people being on the island. <laughs> I don't suppose he does. No. He says he went to the trouble of killing the captain of the yacht, and then this afternoon he killed Cockney. Hey, he come right out and admitted it? He did. He said just when he thought he had me all to himself, up pops you two. Yeah. And so, now, he has to kill you two. Well, why didn't he try it this afternoon while we were working on the plane? Because I didn't let him. Well, how did you stop him? I kept close to him. I kept making him think he just about had me cornered. I kept his mind away from you two. Now, you must be a pretty tricky babe in the jungle to play hide-and-seek like that. I can take care of myself. Hey, look, Gracie. How would you like to get out of this? Meaning what? We got the plane so it'll run again. We can take off any time we like. So what? We want you to come with us. Oh, no, you don't. But look, Gracie. No, sir. Gracie, don't put herself in the hands of a couple of strangers like that. Not Gracie. But all we want to do is to get you off this island and away from Manuel. Fly her to Australia so you can get back home. How do I know that? You'll have to take us on faith. Ha! When I ever take a man on faith again, there'll be two moons in the sky. And I mean blue moons made of cheese. Hey, keep talking to her, Captain. Skip, come back here. What did you say? I said you're acting like a little fool. We want to help you. Skip, you crazy fool. Come back. You want to get off this island, don't you? When a ship comes along and gets me, yes. Well, this is off the beaten lanes of ocean traffic, you know. It might be years. Oh, no! I got it, boss. I got it. But she's fighting like a tiger. On the lonely little atoll in the China Sea, Manuel the pirate has killed two men so that he may have the girl Gracie all to himself. And then Captain Friday and Skip drop down in their disabled plane to complicate matters. Now the plane is mended, and Captain Friday wants to take Gracie off the island with them. But not if Manuel can prevent it. Also, not if Gracie can prevent it, because she doesn't trust any man. In the darkness on the jungle trail, Captain Friday kept Gracie's attention while Skip slipped into the jungle and grabbed the girl from behind. If she won't leave with them of her own free will... And they intend taking her by force. It's so easy. Captain Friday, if you don't give me a hand. <laughs> here I am. Gracie, stop it. Stop it, you hear? You're the worst of the lot. We're not going to hurt you. Throwing a girl down in the dark and sitting on her. Here, what are you doing? Tying your hands behind you. You can't do that, please. Hang on to her, Skip. She's as strong as a box full of tiger cats. Ah, there. Shall I let her up? No. Nope. Keep sitting on her until I tie her feet. I've never been treated like this in all my born days. Well, it's what you get for being so skittish. If you trusted us and come out in the open, we wouldn't have had to do this. I suppose you wouldn't show a young lady no mercy. <sighs> okay. Hey, his feet are tied. Expect the worst, do you, Gracie? I know no reason to expect anything better. Hey, Chief, turn your flash on and let's see what we got, huh? Don't want too much light around here. Liable to attack the pirate. I hope he does come, too, and butchers the both of you. What, were you tied up and helpless the way you are? Shame on you, Gracie. Now, what's the matter? Why don't you turn on a flash? Well, I dropped it. Oh, here it is. Okay, click it on. There. Hey. Well, how do you do? If it isn't Miss Dorothy Lamour herself. Just because I'm reduced to wearing a sarong out here in the island, ain't no reason for calling me Dorothy Lamour. Well, what's wrong with Dorothy Lamour, for guys? sake? Well, I ain't here is all I'm saying. You're a very good-looking young woman, Gracie. And supposing I am, it's only a danger and hindrance to me out here away from civilization. Don't put clothes on my back, no food in my mouth. You say you're reduced to wearing a sarong. Well, where are the clothes you were wearing when you came ashore? I was asleep in my nightgown. When the ship struck, all I had in my mind was to get on deck. Once up there, I was washed overboard. When I woke up, I was lying on the beach. 
And the birds were singing, and it was as nice a day as a body could hope for. So you made your nightgown into a sarong, huh? What else could a lady do? Well, you did yourself proud, if you ask me. That also explains why you have no shoes or stockings. Well, that was the worst part of all, learning to walk barefoot. Well, you seem to be doing all right now. Oh, yes. Now my feet, feet are toughened up, I can hop about the jungle with the best of them. But, hey, why'd you turn off the flashlight? Well, you've seen enough. Besides, we're getting Gracie down the plane and getting out of here. You ain't fooling the poor girl. Is that why you sit on me like a pack of wolves and tie me up just to rescue me? Well, sure. You've got to learn to trust folks, Gracie. I come of age the hard way. All my life, a girl's had to watch out for herself. It was there against the world, and always it's been a man's world. Well, for once in your life, you've got somebody on your side. Well, maybe I have at that. You do begin to act like a pair of gents. Well, we've stood here talking too much as it is. Skip, you want to scout the trail ahead while I carry Gracie? I do not. I want to carry Gracie while you scout the trail ahead. We've got some pretty rugged terrain to cross getting down to the beach. Well, with Dorothy Lamour in my arms, I'll just float down. But why shouldn't a girl walk on her own two feet? Will you come willingly? What's a girl got to lose? Now that I'm beginning to trust you... No, I don't go for that, Captain Friday. I think I ought to carry Gracie. Cut it out, Skip. Look, Gracie... If I untie your feet, will you come along with us without any trouble? I will, and gladly. It's a deal. Untie her feet, Skip. <laughs> In moving pictures, a hero always gets a chance to carry the heroine. Skip. And, yeah, okay, okay, I'm untying her, ain't I? Well, hurry up and don't talk so much. Is his name Skip? Uh-huh. Skip Turner. And who are you, please? Bart Friday. Captain Bart Friday. Okay, Captain Bart Friday, then. Okay, Gracie, your feet are untied. But my hands. Your hands stay tied. But if we trust each other. When we get on the plane, we'll untie your hands. For the present, they stay tied behind you. Here, get up on your feet. Oh, there. Hey, Captain, even with just the moonlight, she looks like something out of a South Sea moon picture. Hair down her back, just the right amount of sarong. All right, Romeo, let's go. You bring up the rear. Gracie, you walk between us. I'll keep an eye open ahead. Now that the moon has come up, be careful. Huh? Careful of what? Have you forgotten my whale is stalking this island? Hey, that's right. The pirate does want our scalps at that. All right. Here we go. Don't fall behind, Skip. <laughs> I'm right on Grace's heels. Honest to goodness, don't the sharp stones and briars and stuff hurt your bare feet? No, not at all. I don't know whether I'm ever going to be able to put shoes on again. Yeah, and I bet you're going to miss the old swimming hole down in the ravine, too. Oh, uh... You saw me down there? Yeah, that was our first peek at you. Of course, we were so far off, about all we could tell was that you was a white girl. Yes, I will, Mr. Swimming. As a matter of fact, I've got to like my island quite a bit. Except for Manuel, the pirate. Well, after all, it was nice knowing there was a man on the island. I thought you'd been fighting him off for six months. And so I have. And I would have shot him down like a dog if he'd bothered me. But still and all, it was comforting, knowing that there was a man about <laughs> You're a queer one, Gracie. Well, after all, when you're living in the wilderness, you just just about forget everything you learned in civilization. Nothing seems to apply, if you know it, I mean. I think I do. Okay, now, we're coming out of the jungle. The path gets pretty rugged. You're going to have to keep low so as not to show up against the skyline. Skip, you're not going to have to help... You're going to have to help Gracie with her hands tied behind her. Skip, are you paying attention? The Skip! That's queer. Didn't you know he wasn't right behind you? But I thought he was. Well, he's not. But that's queer. It's not queer at all. He was bringing up the rear, and like as not, the pirate slipped up behind him and knocked him over the head. See, si. that is right, Capitan. What's that? It's my whale. See, si. I did slip up behind the unwary Skip Turn and tap him on the skull. <laughs> it was so simple. If you've killed Skip Turn... Oh, no, 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 no. That I have not done. Yet. What do you mean, yet? But just what he sound like. This friend of yours is not dead because I need him as a hostage. Hostage? See, si. You have in your possession something which belongs to me. I, therefore, have in my possession something which belongs to you. I don't get it. Perhaps the senor do not wish to get it. What have I that belongs to you? <laughs> this so beautiful senorita. Gracie? Yeah. See, si, see, si. But of course... For six months, I have been on this shipwreck island with Gracie. During this time, I have killed two men because of her. 
If that does not give a man false rights to a woman, then please tell me I'm what a, does. I'm a free girl and I belong to no man. <laughs> but naturally, that is what the senorita is supposed to say. I know you killed the ship's captain and I know you killed Cockney, but if you think that entitles you to any special favor... But senorita, how many men would you have me kill before I may win your favor? What's killing got to do with love? Well, it is always that way in nature. The strongest male kills the weaker males, and then he becomes the one whom the female love. Well, nature can take that sort of business and go jump in the lake with it. You see, Manuel? See what, Capitan? Gracie doesn't agree that she belongs to you. Therefore, I don't have anything of yours. <laughs> so? Yes, so. She'd better turn over Skip to me and be glad we don't nail your skin to a tree before we leave this island. Oh, so you expect to leave this island? Any minute now. <laughs> well, I will tell you this, senor. Unless you turn over to me the senorita whom you have in your possession, your friend Skip Turner will never leave here alive. And uh, I think that goes for you also, Captain Friday. Look, Manuel, I'll make a deal with you. Mm. Deal? Yeah. Why didn't I think of it before? You want to get off this lonely, out-of-the-way island, don't you? Oh, see, si. Naturally, I hope not to spend all my life here. Okay. Come on and join us. No, no. Uh, how do you mean, join with you? We were going to take Gracie out. We've got room for you, too. You, you are speaking of the airship on the beach? That's it. We had engine trouble, but we've got that fixed up. So bring along Skip and... We'll all four be away from here in a half hour. <laughs> Senor, but that is the most handsome offer I have had the pleasure of receiving in my whole life. Can you accept? No. But Manuel... No. Doesn't make sense. Why not? Why not? I am two-time killer. Confess with my own lips. Besides, this Gracie saw me kill the captain. And Gracie told me that you and this key person who is my prisoner saw me kill Cockney. What of it? Well, the minute you arrive in Australia, you tell the, the stories to the authorities. Uh, and what become of poor Manuel? Oh, nonsense. Why should he Hang by the neck until he is dead? That is what happened to poor Manuel. Gracie, talk to him. Tell him you'll keep your mouth shut. But I will not. I <laughs> see. The senorita is the truthful one. You mean you wouldn't give Manuel a break even to save your own honor? Perhaps your own life? If you take Manuel back to Australia with us, I'll point him out as a murderer to the very first policeman. You haven't got any more sense. So, you see, Captain Friday, the best thing for you to do is to give the senorita to me. When you have done this, I will return Skip Turner to you. How does that appeal to you, Gracie? You wouldn't do that to a poor girl. Turn her over to a dirty, killing sea pirate. That's just what I ought to do. Now you are talking sense. Give Gracie and you two fly away. About your own business. And what about after they fly away, Manuel? And uh, what about it, senorita? That's something else you haven't thought about. Once they're away, what's to prevent them from reporting to the barbers that you're a killer and you're on this island? See, si. see, si, that could happen. And they can turn back and get you at their leisure, because how can you possibly get off? Ah, see, si. they must not be allowed to leave. Say, what is this anyway? Whose side are you on, Gracie? They must not be allowed to leave. Uh, they must be killed, see? And their airplane burns. Oh, it's, it's a There's somebody prowling up near my cave. What's that? Impossible, Senorita. Yes, there is. That's the signal the parrot always gives when somebody comes near. It's my warning. But we three and Skip are the only ones on the island. Have you really got Skip there with you, Manuel? See, I have him tied to a tree. Besides, he's unconscious. Then there's somebody else on this island. Manuel, maybe you didn't kill Cockney after all. <laughs> Can a man walk about with the back of his head blown away? Perhaps it's his ghost walking. Senorita, do not say such a thing. Man to be recognized. Ah, ah, one, two, three, hold. Ah, ah, one, two, three, hold. It's somebody. Somebody prowling around the mouth of my cave in the jungle. Then they saw a swaggering Spanish pirate, his head tied up in a bandana, come out of hiding and bend over his victim, quite pleased with himself. All this on an island which was supposedly uninhabited. And what of this girl, Gracie, Captain Friday? 
Well, Gracie was one of four persons washed ashore in a hurricane when a private yacht wrecked itself on the outer reef of the island. She's an English cockney girl and was ladies' maid aboard the yacht. Washed up on the beach with her was the captain and two sailors, Spanish Manuel, alias the pirate, and Cockney. The captain was murdered two days after the landing, and we saw Cockney finished off this afternoon. And now Manuel had Gracie all to himself, or so he thought. But that was before our engines went bad and we came down on the beach. It didn't take us no time to tune up the engines again once we set out on the sand. Yes, Skip, go ahead. Tell him. Well, matter of fact, if it wasn't that we insisted on getting Gracie out of the pirate's clutches and taking her along with us, we'd have been off Shipwreck Island and on our way to Australia by this time. But Gracie's afraid of men. All men. So she wouldn't trust us. <laughs> yeah. So we had to wait till it was dark and catch her unawares and tie her up. <laughs> Man, did she ever put up a fight. Yes, Gracie put up a fight. And then things got complicated all of a sudden. Captain Friday and Skip were taking Gracie from the plateau down to the plain where it rested on the sand. Captain Friday in front, Skip bringing up the rear. Then suddenly, Skip wasn't there anymore. Instead of Skip, there was Manuel, the pirate, lurking just out of range in the darkness. And he had Skip prisoner. He offered to make a deal. You will turn over to me the girl Gracie, and I will turn over to you your friend Skip Turner. No. But this is fair thing to ask. <laughs> You better do it, because if you do not, I will cut your friend Skip Turner's throat from ear to ear. And that will not be happy time for your friend Skip Turner. And it was while Captain Friday stood in the midst of this quandary, trying to make up his mind whether to sacrifice the girl Gracie or his sidekick Skip, or whether maybe there wasn't another way out, that Belshazzar, the parrot, began to squawk in the distance. <laughs> Advance to be recognized. Ah, one, two, three, four. Ah, ah. Here, Gracie. Here, Gracie. You hear that? Gracie. You hear that? Ah, ah. There's Jars are warning me. What do you mean, warning you? Someone's prowling in the dark about my cave up there in the jungle. Here, Gracie. Here, Gracie. Here, Gracie. You hear that? Ah, ah, ah. Somebody's up there. Manuel. See, si, I am here. You still got Skip Turner? Oh, see, si. he is tied to three. I bang him on the head and he is unconscious. Uh, what is the matter with the parrot? Gracie says somebody's prowling in the dark near her cave. Oh, but that cannot be. We are all here. I don't care if we are all here. But Bill shouts across to me like that. It means somebody's prowling close by. Yo-ho! Yo-ho! Fifteen men of the dead man's chest. Here, Gracie! Here, Gracie! You hear that? He's gone back into the cave to hide. He always hides when strangers come near. Doesn't make sense, Gracie. You and I and Skip and Manuel are the only living people on the island. I don't care nothing about that. I know what I know. When Belshazzar warns me, it means something. It's crazy. Unless Manuel is lying to me about having Skip a prisoner. Hey, Manuel. Are you lying to me? But why should I lie to you? What I want to know is, if you have Skip Turner tied up, then who's up prowling around Gracie's cave? Mm, that is what I wonder also, senor. Well, there's somebody up there. If there is anyone prowling this night, then it must be the ghost of the captain or the sailor Cockney. Your conscience bothering you? <laughs> Senor, that is something I pride myself on. I have no conscience. And there's something I pride myself on. I don't believe in ghosts. Senor, you do not know what you are saying. Well, ghosts or no ghosts, I'm in favor of getting off this island as fast as possible. And I'm making you a proposition, Manuel. See, si, I am listening. There's room in the plane for four of us. You throw in with Skip and Gracie and me. We'll take you off the island and get you out of this place. <laughs> Oh, no, senor. And turn me over to the police for murder. I guarantee we won't. You release Skip and come along, and we'll make a special landing any place you say. On some other island or on the mainland, just as you choose. You you guarantee this thing, Captain Friday? Word of honor. We'll give you every break. Hmm. That is good enough for Manuel, senor. You better be careful. What do you mean? If you trust Manuel one inch, you're a bigger fool than I thought you were. Senor, I am waiting. I have caught... Skip Turner loose from the tree where I have tied him. If he tried the double cross, that's his hard luck. Come on. Ah, here you come. I thought perhaps you had thought better of your bargain. I don't make a deal I'm not prepared to keep. Oh, the senorita. Turn that flashlight out of my face. And I warn you, Manuel, one move out of you and I'll shoot you without blinking a blooming eyelash. Captain Friday let you carry a gun? 
I thought you was his prisoner. I am not his prisoner. As you can very well see, my hands are released and he has returned my gun. Ah, I see. I well, can't see that. Well, turn that blinking torch out of my face. Turn the flashlight over this way, Manuel, so I can get a better look at Skip. See? But I did not hit him too hard. He should not be unconscious all this time. Well, he still is. You're going to have to help me carry him down to the beach. Captain Friday, I don't trust Manuel. Oh. What was that? Did you hit Gracie in the dark? Do not move, Captain Friday. Do not move a muscle because you are outlined in the moonlight. And I will kill you if you do. Me, you cannot see. <laughs> I am in the shadow. Then you did strike down Gracie. See, si. You should not have given back her gun. A senorita is a dangerous animal with a gun. What's the idea? What's this all about? <laughs> Senor, you did not think for one minute I would trust myself in your hand. If you don't know the truth when you hear it... No, no, I trust no man. There is no such thing as truth. Well, the worse for you, then. No, senor. The worse for you and for your friends, Keep Turner. Maybe. See, si. for now I have you where I want you. It is so simple to do what is necessary. We offer you rescue and freedom... In return, you offer us death. <laughs> See, it is so. Why? You take such pleasure in killing your fellow men? No, no, it is not that. And for the love of Pete, what is it? With you and Skip Turner gone, then Gracie and I will have this island all to ourselves. Yeah? See. What about that somebody or something that's prowling up around Gracie's cave? Mm, that I do not believe. But you said yourself... See? When I am making big deal with you, I say one thing. When you are in my power, <laughs> I say something else. That's great. No, no. I do not think there is anyone on this island except the four of us. And in ten minutes, there will be only two of us. <laughs> the senorita and I. Okay, Manuel. But Gracie swears the parrot always acts the way it did when there's prowlers. Oh, senor, a parrot can make a mistake. Human beings make the mistake. Why should not a parrot be allowed a mistake also? I think you're crazy. Eh, what difference does it make? Crazy or not crazy, you will be just as dead. Okay. Shoot and get it over with. Uh, senor, you prefer to be shot in the front or in the back? What difference does it make? Mm, I, I do not know. Some people have... Fear. Oh, shoot it, get it over with. Si, senor. I do not wish to keep the senor in suspense. But don't worry. It will be over quickly. Right in the heart, senor. It will be over quickly. One. Two. Manuel. Manuel. Where's that flashlight? Here it is, Captain. Skip, you're conscious? Well, I think so. Here's the flashlight you was looking for. Dead as a mackerel. <sighs> that was a good shot from where you were lying, Skip. Hey, I didn't kill him. You didn't? Heck, fine, no. I thought you pulled a fast one. He was right on me. I couldn't move a muscle. Hey, where's Gracie? Hey, maybe she'd come too and crawl around. No. Oh, no, here she is. Still knocked out. Well, you didn't kill him. Gracie didn't kill him, and I didn't kill him. And who the heck did? Looks like Gracie was right. Huh? About what? There's somebody else on the island. Hey, she knew it all the time? Well, you were knocked out. The parrot doll Shazer began acting up. Gracie said he always did it when somebody was prowling around her cave. Yeah, but I thought there was only you and Gracie and the pirate and me. Well, looks like reinforcements have landed. Reinforcements for who? Looks like our side. Hey, it does at that. Mowing down Banwell here just as he was about to make cat meat out of you. What do you think we ought to do now? Well, we can either pick up Gracie and hit for the beach, get the plane in the air... Or we can go back up to Gracie's cave and try to thank our rescuer. Yeah, it'd be kind of a dirty trick to just run off and leave a guy behind who saved your life. You feel that way, do you? Why, sure. How about you? The same. Well, then, we're heading back up through the jungle to Gracie's cave, huh? We are. You want to carry Gracie, or... Of course I want to carry Gracie. I ain't had a gal's head resting on my shoulder. And you ain't going to begin now. Hey, Gracie, are you all right? Got a headache big enough for everybody. Well, then, naturally, I'll carry you. You'll do no such thing. I got my two feet. As long as I have, I'll walk on them. Yeah, let me help you up. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, what hit me? Manuel the pirate did. Why, that double crossing over. Here, oh. pick her up, Skip. She's not able to walk. You bet you. Up you come. Here now. Now, just take it easy, Gracie. You don't feel like wrestling. 
Oh, I doubt it's that. Come on. Oh, I'm dizzy as a bumblebee. Oh, I told you not to trust Manuel. What did you escape? Escape my eye. He's dead. Dead? Manuel's dead? There's a stinking fish. Yeah, where are you taking me? Back to your cave in the jungle. But I thought you were taking me on the airplane. That'll come later, when we discover who killed Manuel. Who killed... But didn't you do it? Nope. It skipped, didn't it? Not me. Hey, your hair smells good. Maybe by my hair. What I want to know is who killed Manuel. Mm. However it was prowling around your cave earlier. Well, Charter, the parrot warned me. Didn't I tell you? Yeah, but who is he? I don't know. Well, whoever he is, is a good shot. Got Manuel right through the heart. But why are you going back to my cave? To say thank you to the mystery man. And get a bullet through your own heart? Yeah? That's what you two are heading for. A bullet through your heart. This tiny, isolated atoll in the midst of the South China Sea should be called Dead Men's Island instead of Shipwreck Island. The captain of the yacht is dead, Cockney is dead, and now Manuel the pirate is dead. And somewhere abroad on this two-by-four coral strand is a phantom figure, moving in stealth and in darkness. Who is it? That's why Captain Friday and Skip insist on returning to Gracie's cave. They want to know, and they're returning against Gracie's vehement protests. You're doing yourself an arm coming back like this. You're doing yourself an arm and you'll get no thanks for it. Don't you get it, Gracie? Somebody done us a good deed. Shot the pirate and saved our lives. But you can't just up and fly away from a deserted island and leave a friend behind. He ain't no friend of yours. What did you say, Gracie? I said he ain't no friend of yours and you'll save yourself a heap of trouble if you go away from this island. Just a minute. Now, let's get to the bottom of this. Bottom of what? Who isn't a friend of ours? Whoever shot Manuel. He'll do the same by you. You say that as though you know what you're talking about. Of course I know what I'm talking about. Of course I know. And this phantom person isn't a phantom at all. I mean, as far as you're concerned. I never said that. You the same, Miss Sarah. I never did. Why, sure you did. Hold it, Skip. Now, look, Gracie. There is somebody on this island you know about, isn't there? There's been somebody on the island all the time. Somebody from the wrecked yacht. That's a lie. Is it? You heard me say so. But I don't believe you. I was washed ashore in the storm. The captain was washed ashore and so was Cockney and Manuel. And that's all? And that's all. Well, except for Bill Shazer, my friend the parrot. Okay, come on. Yeah. Now, just a minute. Take her arm, Skip. Yeah, come on, Gracie. Don't take hold of me. Don't drop me up. Hey, what you scared about? Do you know what's good for you? Don't lay your hand on me. I don't get this, do you, Cap? No, but I'm beginning to get ideas. Look, I'm telling you for your own good. You treated me like a pair of gents, and I don't want to see you get hurt. What's that mean? The cave where I've been living for the last six months is just up ahead. I can't keep you from going there, but if you do, you won't leave this island alive. Hey, now you got my appetite all wetted up. Don't be a fool. Go away while you can. Go down to the beach and get in your plane before it's too late. Will you come with us? I can't. I can't. Don't you understand? Even if I wanted to, I wouldn't be allowed. What's to prevent you? How can you stand there arguing with a girl when your very lives are in danger? No, Gracie, you don't think we'd go off and leave a pretty gal in trouble? I'm in no trouble. I agree with you. No use arguing. Come on. You fools. You're a pair of fools. That's the mouth of the cave right up ahead, isn't it? Yes, that's it. You don't need to be so unhappy, Gracie. Captain Friday and I can take care of ourselves. Hey! Run for it. The mouth of the cave. Inside. That's it. Made it. I made it all right. Hey, that rifle bullet went by my ear like a bumblebee in a fruit jar. Well, now, maybe you believe me. About what? That you're dead men. Hey, I don't feel dead. There you are. Dead men. Both of you. Gracie. Well? Where's Belshazzar? With the parrot? Yes, the parrot. Where is he? Well, how should I know? About somewhere, I suppose. You said he always squawked when strangers came near the cave. We're strangers. Why didn't he squawk? He's a temperamental parrot. You also said he hid himself at the back of the cave here when strangers got too near. And so he does. Well, let's get him. I'd like to look at him. Well, maybe he ain't there. Maybe he's out in the jungle. Why would he be out there? Well, Beth Charles has been making eyes at a cockatoo out in the jungle lately. He's probably out there sitting with her in the moonlight. In other words, Gracie, 
There is no parrot. Hey, Chief. You heard him with your own ears, didn't you? I heard something you say was a parrot. Sounded like a parrot to me, Cam. Maybe. Maybe it sounded like a human being trying to sound like a parrot. That's a lie. Okay. Get Belshazzar the parrot and prove it to me. If Manuel or Cockney or the captain was alive, they'd tell you there was two a parrot. Belshazzar belonged to the galley cook on the yacht. Everybody on the yacht knew about Belshazzar. He was the life of the party he was before the shipwreck. How did you happen to get him after the wreck? I found him washed ashore. His feather was wet and he was shivering like a leaf. I picked him up in my arms and dried him and brought him to my cave here. He was that grateful he wouldn't leave me afterwards. Why don't we go to the back of the cave and have a look? He might be there. Why so old fired interested in the parrot? Do you mind coming back with me? It's the only thing that'll make you happy. Skip, you stay here. Watch the entrance. While you and Gracie look for Bell Shares, huh? Yeah. Keep an eye open. I don't want anyone sneaking in behind us while we're back there. Sure. Shall we go, Gracie? I've given you all the warning I'm going to. From now on, you'll just have to do the best that you can. <laughs> just listen at her. As though me and Captain Friday could... Hey. Hey, out there, outside the cave. No use giving me that silent treatment. I've seen your shadow when you moved behind that tree yonder. Then you have seen the shadow of your own doom, which is close upon you. Hey, a doggone oriental. Oriental is a general term which covers many races and creeds and facial and mental characteristics. You sound like a dad born professor. I am a student by avocation. My profession is a culinary art practice aboard seagoing vessels. In other words, you're a sea cook by trade. If you wish. Hey, then you must be the cook aboard the yacht that Gracie was telling us about. The girl tell you about me? Yeah, that she was the owner of the parrot, Belshazzar, on the yacht. Oh, what else did she say? Why so? Hey, look at what you hiding out on us for. We owe you a lot for shooting the parrot at a kind of a critical time in our lives. Come on out and shake hands with a man that wants to thank you. Do not be a fool. Huh? What's that mean? I did not kill Manuel to save you. I killed him because he struck the girl. Oh, oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Oh, so that's what Gracie meant when she warned us not to grab a hold of her or rough her up. You was watching us, huh? I was watching. Well, what the heck you want to kill us for? If you've been watching, you know doggone well we don't mean Gracie no harm. You are trying to take her from this island. Well, sure, but we'll take you, too. We'll be glad to take you. No. What you mean, no? You don't want to stay here forever, do you? With the girl? Yes. Hey, look, do you mean you'd be willing to spend the rest of your life out here, isolated from the rest of the world, if we'll just go away and leave you and Gracie alone? It would be a pleasure. It would be something beyond words to express. <laughs> I'm afraid I'd get kind of tired of even Salome and the Queen of Sheba rolled into one after six months of the year. That is the Western mind, the poetic mind of the East knows how to make happiness last forever. And so you're going to kill Captain Friday and me so you and Gracie can have everlasting happiness, huh? It is so written. Well, somebody wrote wrong, brother, and he better dig himself up an eraser and rub it out. That is foolish, childish talk. And besides, what about Gracie? What does she say about all this? Woman is musical instrument ready to respond to those who know how to play upon her. A woman is happy anywhere if placed in the hands of one who is a master of such matters. Just as the violin plays as sweetly in the drawing room or in the darkness of a cold cellar, if it is in a master's hands. Well, that's quite a speech, Professor. But I'd still like to know what Gracie would say with her own lips. Where is she? She and Captain Friday are at the back of the cave looking for the parrot. Parrot? Oh, there is no parrot. Huh? But Gracie said you had one on the ship. On the yacht, yes. But Belshazzar was drowned. It was I who imitated the parrot. But what for? To protect Gracie from the Cockney and Manuel. I watched him in the jungle, and whenever they decided to try to catch Gracie, I would cry out like the parrot used to do on the yacht. Thus, she was able to hide in the jungle. Well, just the same. Captain Friday and Gracie are in the back of the cave and looking for the parrot Bill Shazza. And I wish they'd get back here. Just as I told you, Bill Shaw's is out in the moonlight with the cockatoo. Gracie, did anyone ever tell you you couldn't lie worth a plugged nickel? Is that any way to talk to a girl? Look here, in the back of the cave. Where did these sea chests come from? Sea chests? Yes, you know what a sea chest is, don't you? Look, three, four, five of them. 
They came off the wrecked yacht. They were washed up on the beach at night. Hmm. I suppose you put them on your back and lugged them up here to the cave. And supposing I did, I'm a strong girl. Baloney. What's in them? Food supplies. A hundred, hundred and fifty pounds apiece. I know that. You know as well as I do that the phantom who killed Manuel carried these up here. You and whoever he is have been working some kind of deal together That's and... not true. Not a blinking word of it is... <laughs> Gun battle. Skip's in trouble. Come on. Oh, you heard someone scream. I'll say you did. Skip! Skip, are you all right? Hi, Captain. Better see what I got. You hear that? What has he done? What has he done? Yeah, I am. Hey, did you hear that gun battle? Boy, it was hot and heavy for a minute. What have you done? What have you done? Come on out here and I'll show you. Here's your bell, Shaz of the Paris. Dead on a mackerel. Chad. Chad, what have they done? What happened, Skip? Who is he? This guy was the cook on the yacht. He's the one who's been imitating the parrot. He told you that? Sure, told me all about it. And then he sneaked in and tried to kill me. Almost did, too, but I got a couple of shots in where they did a job. Come on, Gracie, get up on your feet. It's cruel. Cruel, that's what it is. Up you come. Were you in love with him? No. But he was the best friend a girl ever had. I found him washed up on the beach after the storm. I took care of him. He was in love with you. I don't believe it. He was just grateful for the way I saved him. Uh-uh. He was in love. He wanted to keep just you and him on this island forever. He was devoted. He protected me from the other men. He never tried to take advantage of me because I was a girl. Sounds like a decent gent. And all because I nursed him back. When he nearly drowned on the beach. Well, he was out to get Captain Friday and me. He said so. I told you that. That's why I wanted you to go away without me. Hey, you wanted to stay here forever with him? No, but I didn't want him killed either. And I didn't want either of you killed. Well, anyway, we can give him a decent burial. Yeah, dig a grave and then let's get off this crazy place. You got your belt fastened, Gracie? It's fastened. Shut the door and lock it, Skip. Door secure. Turn him over, Captain. Okay, here goes. How they acting, Chief? Purring like a tiger cat. Well, then, let's go. Hang on, Gracie. I am with every bit of me. All aboard for Australia, Honolulu, and San Francisco. Give her the gun, Captain. And there we are. Are we up in the air? <laughs> Relax, Gracie. You can open your eyes now. <laughs> She held her breath and gritted her teeth and kept her eyes shut all during the takeoff. Well, a girl never knows what might happen to her up in an airplane. Hey, y'all, look at down there. There goes Shipwreck Island. Oh, it wasn't such a bad place. Not bad at all. It's just that men can't keep from killing each other when a girl's around. <laughs> That is what happened to the girl on Shipwreck Island. From Australia, Captain Friday and Skip returned to San Francisco. And when you next hear from them, they will undoubtedly be up to their necks in high adventure, intrigue, and more blood and thunder. You have been listening to Adventures by Morse.